Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the boudoir. I am your host, Aisha Jones. This is my co-host, Evie the Cat. She has a lot to say today. She, you know, she's just going to be hanging out here. Or actually, you know what? She's leaving. She She's done for the day. That was enough for her. She said so much. So everybody say thank you, Evie the Cat. <laughs> Happy July, everybody. Happy birthday to all the cancers out there. It was actually just my sister's birthday on Saturday. So if anybody wants to wish my sister a happy belated birthday, I have just been in my little content creator bag this week. I feel like I finally have my knack for creating content back. So a little shameless plug if you'd like to follow me on my second channel. That's where I post fashion content, beauty content. I just posted like a summer favorites with all of my favorite products. If you guys want to watch that, I will link that down below. It's just called Hey Aisha. I'm also Hey Aisha on Instagram and TikTok. So along with that content creation that I've been doing and just letting go and having fun and not putting so much pressure on the types of things that I'm posting i've also noticed another side of the internet which i'm sure you guys have all noticed too and i'm going to call this stitch culture okay this phenomenon this thing that's been going on it's this idea of like you know people on tiktok always stitching other people always having so many opinions on how other people choose to live their lives the people that make outrage and rage bait content specifically to have people like us getting all outraged and upset and firing off in the comments and making them money and giving them engagement like this whole shift that the internet has taken this whole like outrage debate like who gets to sit in the front seat your mom or your girlfriend who gets to do this who eats first like all of this type of like I'm going to stand on my soapbox and have my voice heard in this imaginary little play play scenario that we just created out of nowhere just for the sake of having content. I would say this started with like Facebook and Twitter. Like remember back in the day when people would just post questions like gay gay son thought daughter and like I know it's supposed to be funny but like a lot of people really identify with these types of like debates so much so we have whole platforms such as the shade room or pop base pop crave like all of those little like rumor accounts and you know of course the drama channels that would report on all of these crazy things happening on YouTube like drama get in and all of this stuff like I feel like we've just now evolved into this whole posing questions out there to people and they're not always done in good faith. Like I feel like in the beginning when you would have people asking these debate questions, when these conversations were fresh, like although these things were pretty much just hip hypothetical situations, like I feel like they might have started off harmless, but then they've kind of just evolved into these whole different sectors of the internet. And so now we have all of this like femininity content and dating content alpha male all of these things that are designed to get you to start talking I've really been just like sitting around and playing around with these different ideas in different sectors of the internet and like thinking about what are these things actually doing to advance us like are we actually talking about anything for real in these conversations or are we just trying to hear ourselves talk basically social media didn't used to be like this before you would just post like when you would go on instagram you could post your turkey sandwich and put a little taylor swift song lyric or whatever and go on about your merry day it would get like five likes 13 likes nobody cared it was just i'm posting a picture because that's what this app is used for same with twitter you would just post i'm going to my grandma's house today just watched uh jersey shore and it was just simple. Social media used to be simple. It used to be authentic. And it still is and can be. However, because we know what we know now about social media and how just by posting one thing, you could literally go viral and become an online sensation overnight. And people are enticed by that because what comes with that is money, sponsorships, brand deals, free product and PR, like all of that stuff is highly attainable, especially in an economy like today. People are trying to make ends meet and they are willing to do whatever they can to get those ends met, right? Thus, we have all of these people that come online and, you know, preach their little stuff, preach their ideas, talking about their opinions on dating, their opinions on, you know, splitting the bill and 50-50 and this makes somebody a provider. And, and then it's like, People know what they're doing now that they see that there's so much money to be made in this social media space. And I've, I still feel like people don't truly understand how much you really can make in this industry. Like, it's crazy. People are making like $60,000 for one singular TikTok. One singular TikTok. 
I mean, everybody's not making that type of money, but it's just that money is there and can be made. So, of course, everybody wants a piece of that pie. Everybody wants to get in on it. And then you have people that now will make their whole page just stitching and just conversations about people's lives and all of these little little micro topics that pop up. People always want to jump in and give their two cents because especially if it happens to be controversial and if it's an unpopular opinion, like you're seeing now all of these people have so much to say. They have such a crazy opinion. They want to be different. They want to have their voice heard. And they want to seem like, you know, their their thought process and their viewpoint is superior to others. And then what do we do? We get in the comments because somebody says something inflammatory, like my my unpopular opinion is blah, 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 blah. And we all run in the comments. Everybody runs to the stitches. Everybody gets so emotional and gets so deep into it. And that's literally what the content is designed for. Like, we all need to remember that social media is a business at the end of the day. Like, people are here to make money. People are into cash in. And you are the product. You might be watching these people's content for free. Some people, you might be a part of their Patreon or their membership. Or you're just, you know, you're willing to give them extra to get more exclusive content. But for the most part, you are watching these people, you are watching these people for free. And... When something is free, that tends to usually mean that you are the product. All of us posting on social media or just consuming social media, we are the product. They make money off of us. They make money off of the ad views. They're making money off of our data because we don't really truly know what these companies are doing with their data practices okay that that actually scares me like the idea of just people hoarding all of this data about us some things that we don't even know and some of these algorithms get super duper duper specific in terms of what you want to see and like to the point where sometimes they predict what I want to see and it gets kind of scary but you know you're the product we are all the product me posting on YouTube I'm a vehicle for them to make more money because they're able to place ad revenue on my videos they're able to make money off of you viewing the ad and just you know when you're consuming this dating content the self-help content the level up content even just like the silly relatable stuff you are in some way now a product to these people you are a means to get them money you are a means to get them food in their stomachs a roof over their head their bills paid especially if this is their full-time job or they really 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 want this to be their full-time job that's why you really have to vet even the people you're watching on social media because anybody can sell you anything and anybody can sell you a personality and they can be completely opposite to what they are portraying vet the people you're watching understand that like even the most pure-hearted pure-intentioned influencers and content creators they are in some way pushing an agenda like even me i'm always sharing my opinions and my views and you can get influenced by that so you just have to be careful with what you're intaking like if you're watching some of this crazy like crazy couple content that I'm seeing where these couples are just doing terrible things to each other be careful of what you're consuming especially there's so many young people on this internet and it's like the types of pipelines and weird little corners of the internet they can fall down real quick is quite scary some of these like weird alt-right pipelines on reddit and like these insult forums even for women though like certain femininity content is just not conducive to your well-being like some of it is just too focused on the exterior too focused on this is how you act if you want a man to like you and it's like sometimes it can be helpful but it's like if you make your whole personality around what men find attractive or what men want it's like eh is that really good for you at the end of the day? Like, do you want your whole life to be surrounded by being the perfect woman that a man would want? Like, you just gotta ask yourself what means the most to you. And even if you're not monetarily supporting these people by buying their merch or being in their memberships or something, you're still paying attention. We all know that attention is currency. It's another form of money. And if you're watching hours and hours of somebody's content, like, you're eventually gonna get sucked into their little world so it's like just be mindful of what they're selling and what they're pushing you know if all they post is outrage content pay attention to your behaviors in real life if you come off social media feeling irritable ready to fight ready to duke it out with just any old random person you gotta ask yourself like what kinds of things am I watching and it doesn't even just stop at concert creators like what type of movies are you watching what kind of music are you listening to you know it's a debate as old as time does do video games make people violent do, does certain media make people act in certain ways 
I don't know where I stand on that, but I will say there is power in what you choose to pay attention to. So if you're choosing to stay in like more negative spots of the internet or just watch things that make you feel very down, it'd be worth it to try listening to some positive affirmations or watching things that make you feel empowered. And like going back on the relationship content, like a lot of it banks on people's insecurities. Let's be real, whether they realize they're doing it or not, relationship content is a huge culprit in this too. You gotta be careful of the people who post so much of their relationship. Like I, th it's one thing to just be proud of the person you're with and you genuinely are somebody that just likes to shout it from the rooftops who you're in love with. There's certain people that their whole brand is their relationship or their whole brand is like, here's how you get treated like a lover girl. And, you know, yeah, maybe their partner does give them the princess treatment most of the time, but it's like, are they showing the bad times too or are they only showing the good times? And you have a right to show what you want on your page. Like, obviously, it's also terrible to post like the, the toxic relationships because there's people that do that too that will just all the time just show all of the terrible things that go on in the relationship. And then there's some that are just show everything that's positive. So it's like you just have to, like I said, use your discernment. Like who's doing it as a means to like, see, I'm credible. See, listen to me buy my course because look at my great relationship. And they're only showing the good sides and they're not showing what really truly goes on behind closed doors or what they had to do to get that stuff. And then some people really just are about that life and they get the princess treatment and they really do live it through and through. But all in all, these people do bank on your insecurities. They bank on you feeling lonely or feeling like you want your dream partner and you're ready to change your life. So they use that to get you to trust them and to watch their content. And again, it's not always malicious, but you just have to be mindful of like, what is their agenda? What are they trying to gain from this? I think family channels can do this too, like portraying this perfect family life, like all of the kids are perfect, not a hair out of place, everything is always so magical. But then those children of the family vloggers come out years later and they're like, um, I was literally forced to do this and I was basically like a child actor. So just be mindful of what you're watching, you know? That's why I always say be your own relationship goals, love yourself the way you want to be loved, don't, you know, put all of your stock and bank on all of these people you don't even know because they can they could be showing you fake stuff artificial relationship and then here you are giving them thousands of dollars worth of courses and buying all of their stuff because they know what they're talking about whole time their relationship is a scam so you know be your own relationship goals love yourself the way you wish to be loved surround yourself with people that love you but i really do think like in light of this whole stitch culture and like let me add my thoughts on top of the thoughts that everybody else already said but i want to stitch mine in hopes of becoming viral like we really need to bring back originality like there was something so special about the internet before like i said in instagram when you could post your little baloney sandwich there was no pressure there was no like i gotta get viral because i can get on this PR list and I can get seen by this brand like it was literally just you're posting because you want to there was no so, like ulterior motive you were just posting the picture or the video because you liked it and you wanted to post it we need to get back to that because I feel like so many people are just trying to chase the next viral moment and it's like at the expense of what though like now we have to sit through all of this discourse all of this recycled like hypotheticals that nobody actually really cares about in real life and it's like, are we talking about anything productive? Like, are we actually moving the needle forward or are we just regurgitating the same talking points over and over and over again? And there's people that will just make their whole accounts just stitching other people and just talking about other people's situations and talking down on them and calling them names. Like, it gets to a point, like, what kind of, like, what thoughts do you actually have? Like, if there were no viral stories that you could talk about, what would your content be? What would you talk about? Do you have anything of importance to say or do you just tack on to what other people already mentioned? You know, we need to go back to having our own thoughts, having our own opinions and like having original content because some people, whether you're a content creator or you're just somebody that co like comments on people's posts on reels or TikToks, what do you bring to the internet besides negativity? Because it's like, as I talked about in some of my previous podcast episodes with like this weird negative space we get in on these social media conversations, what do you bring to the internet besides negativity and drama and stitches? 
and just nastiness like what are you actually bringing what do you have to talk about besides giving your two cents on the way other people choose to live their life it's one thing if a conversation that's going on in today's popular culture is really compelling you to speak on it and you're including your own like analysis and opinions and you're actually taking the time to like construct a critical thought you're not just oh, this person's a poopy head because they did this. This person's stupid because that, like, do you have real thoughts to share or are you just talking? I think two examples of people who do this really well, who like will talk about other people's situations or just things that are going on in today's society, but always brings their own analysis. And number one, that's Cecilia Regina on TikTok, but I believe she's also on YouTube as well. She always has like such great insight and actual critiques, not just this person's stupid, this person's this, like real critiques. She's intelligent, she has something to say, and you could always learn from her videos. Another person that does that is Khadija oh I'm so sorry I don't know how to pronounce their last name but Khadija does videos on here doing media analysis they always have such great insight you know they take pieces of conversations that are going on online but it's not just like the same talking points like they bring something new to the conversation that is fine I think if you're gonna do that have something to say but if you're just like being negative being a grouch being a grump just talking down on people it's like get a new shtick find something else to talk about and it's not just online people that do that people that just sit around and gossip and talk about people and what they choose to do with their life like what would you actually have to talk about if you couldn't talk about other people have your own thoughts have something to say have your own opinions but don't sit around and stitch people's content all day and just talk about what other people choose to do and who's going 50 50 and what like I honestly don't care anymore like I feel like the younger me used to have so much to say like always felt like my voice needed to be heard but it's like after a certain point y'all already beat the you know beat this conversation down like what more do I have to add like does my opinion really matter you know I'll speak up sometimes when I feel like I want to sometimes I do comment on certain things but like I'm not gonna comment on every little single thing that happens online because I simply don't care I have no comment no opinion on the matter that takes energy and I don't have the energy for that especially not in this summer heat come on I think the key is adding value to content like gone are the days of just doing anything to get viral I truly believe that in the next few years we're gonna have quality over quantity it's gonna be less about like I just want my voice heard I just want to be a part of the conversation and it's gonna be more intentional content more thought out content and people who actually have real things to say and show i think we're tired of just like the outrage content and like the the whole cycle of just you know we're all gonna get outraged about something we're gonna talk about it for like a week or two we forget about it we move on the next thing comes up we argue we call each other poopy heads we like we're eh, eh. Eh. can we talk about something else can we have something else to talk about it's getting boring snooze i truly think quality and intentionality needs to take precedence over i'm just trying to get my next viral moment and we all have done it you know like we've all fallen victim to the rage bait culture because what does rage bait do it capitalizes on people's impulses okay a lot of people lack self-control a lot of people lack emotional control and if you guys want to see a podcast episode it's called how to be emotionally bougie if you want to control your emotions a little bit more but a lot of people struggle to control their emotions and you know nobody's perfect we all do it sometimes we fall victim to these little outrage rage bait conversations but then it's like if you actually sit and think about it does this specific situation truly affect my life or is this just another hypothetical situation that's designed to get my blood pressure up and get me all upset for no reason when in all actuality if i put the phone down the problem's gone the problem doesn't exist if i go outside and touch grass the problem is not there it only exists when i'm on the phone so you have to really ask yourself that like before you go stitch somebody before you add your opinion to the all like the million and one opinions that already exist on this topic of conversation before you get all crazy and out of character you need to ask yourself is it actually worth it is it worth it to get outraged over this situation that has absolutely nothing to do with me? 10 times out of 10, it's probably not worth it, you know? 
if you're feeling feisty and you're feeling fun and you just want to blab about something I say go for it but it's like if your whole page is just you getting outraged and your blood pressure being on a thousand like why do you want your page to be about that why do you want your space to be so negative like what do you actually like to do besides get mad over internet conversation you know and if you especially if you consider yourself to be a sensitive person I would really recommend to take a step back from these conversations and like just be careful with what you're consuming because you can really take that stuff home with you and ruminate over it and here you are upset over a twitter debate or a, a, a TikTok, like it's not worth it to be so worked up over something that doesn't actually affect you. It's wasting precious energy that you could use on something that is going to benefit you. So if you do find yourself stuck in this like rage bait cycle of just, you know, always being a part of the latest conversation, I would highly recommend taking a step back periodically from social media. Like there's nothing wrong with walking away for a couple days, couple weeks, whatever you need to do, or just block certain words and accounts. If you're tired of the 50-50 conversation, block all of the words necessary. Mute people's names scroll past it hit not interested there's so much at our disposal these days with social media as much as we can demonize it sometimes sometimes these tools really help it don't always work 100 percent of the time because it's some people i blocked and i still see their face and i'm like what what's going on but it's the point it's the principle you're blocking these things out of your online space because you deserve to have a space curated for you that does not make you feel like you want to rip your hair out because it's just the internet. We're supposed to laugh at fun kitty videos and learn how to put on makeup, okay? And talk about conversations. We're not supposed to just call each other doo-doo heads all day. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. And I feel like we tend to demonize blocking. Like we act like, oh, you're blocking me? You're so immature. You're so bothered. Like you must really care. And it's like, the the block button is there for a reason like I used to be somebody that was like oh I don't even need to block you like I just won't interact it's better to just block because I actually feel like blogging is more emotionally mature than banking on oh I'm just not going to interact with their content but always somehow you end up right back in that conversation it's just better to block and cut off all contact immediately why continue to expose yourself to something that continues to trigger you if you don't like the conversation if you don't like the person just block them like it's not immature it's to protect your peace and to protect your energy so just remember that your energy is super important even if it's just on social media like you deserve to curate a safe space that makes you feel free and comfortable to scroll you should not have to subject yourself to these conversations that continue to trigger you and continue to make you upset like just cut it off completely all right so that concludes today's episode i hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like this video and subscribe for all of my youtube viewers i love you my youtube viewers and if you're listening to me on spotify and apple and all of the other audio platforms make sure you rate me five stars leave me a review if you feel so inclined and don't forget to download today's episode you can listen to it on your lunch break in the bathroom whatever you want to do girl i will talk to you guys next week bye